everybody. Welcome to the 11th episode of YLC Chats. Today we have another really exciting episode with Trevor Paxton from Phoenix, Arizona. So we're going to get started. Ryan, do you want to ask the first question? How did you become involved in in Best Buddies? Hi, Ryan. It is an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm so excited to be here with the YLC and to talk a little bit more about my experience. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for having me on the show. So I became involved in Best Buddies in high school, actually, um, which was uh, longer ago than I'm willing to admit. But I was a part of the Best Buddies Club and uh, my, one of my really good friends growing up, he has a brother with Down syndrome. And so I kind of grew up knowing the IDD population and just wanted to get a little bit more involved doing some fun stuff. And so I was involved in high school for a bit. And then after high school, once I went to college uh, and post-college, I started working for the host site or the partner with the Arizona State University chapter called the Arc of Tempe. And that's a recreation center for adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And they're the the partners with the Arizona State chapter to kind of pair up all the buddies. So I was there, then I volunteered afterward and now I'm here. And I always kind of joke that if you volunteer long enough for something, eventually you're going to work there. And that is absolutely true. That is a great story to tell, uh, Trevor. And and Best Buddies is, is very lucky to uh, have you uh, after all the years you became in, involved in, in, in Best Buddies. It's been a long time in the making, and I'm super excited to be here and to continue my career. I have another question for you. What is your current role, Renton Best Buddies, and what do you uh, what do you do in that role? Um, I am the director of development within the state of Arizona. So my role essentially is special events and fundraising within the state. So that's everything from the Friendship Walk to our Spirit of Friendship and Champion of the Year Gala um, to everything that's a little bit less fun, like the grants and everything. Although there are some people that really take a lot of pride in that. So uh, anything that is related to money coming into the organization in the state of Arizona, um, that's in my wheelhouse. And that is strictly just to make sure that we have enough funding to continue to push the mission of Best Buddies forward. Um, You know, we can't fundraise without the mission and our programs, and we can't have our programs without the funding. So I really try to keep that at the core of everything that we do here in the state, just to make sure that we are really making sure that uh, the mission is front and center at all times. I have the third question for you. What is your favorite thing about Best Buddies? Uh, This is an amazing question. Um, I think that it is the people by far, not even a, not even a, not no contest. Um, Best Buddies attracts such an amazing group of passionate individuals. And I find myself constantly inspired by those around us from our students and our teachers to our volunteers and board members. And of course, all of my coworkers within the organization um, who just give so much to make this organization move forward. And of course, my buddy Charles, I would be remiss if I didn't mention him. Um, It is amazing to kind of think back on the long kind of track that I've had to get to this point within Best Buddies, but um, it is the people who inspire me on a day in and day out basis. And I think that it is imperative that we just continue to make sure that the individuals stay at the forefront. You know, um, the organization is amazing, but it's the people that make up the organization that are even better. Why do you think the Best Buddies mission is so important? I really think that the the advocacy in general for underserved groups is so important in every area of this world. And the work that Best Buddies does to contribute to the disability rights movement uh, is vital, but I think it's the social and emotional learning aspects uh, that really set it apart from other organizations. Um, To me, it is the the connections that are made and uh, then seeing how those connections in a very organic matter or a manner can, um, can, can really just kind of shift an entire mindset. And if you can do it for one person, it can do it for a lot of people. And so I think the work that um, Best Buddies is doing in communities and schools and workplaces and basically in every aspect in, in, uh, in inclusive living, I think that it is really amazing to see that uh, it's not only just about friendship, but it's about acceptance. It's about in, uh, inclusivity 
in a very, very real sense in, uh, in so many aspects of our lives. And that's the part that really hits home for me because, you know, I've been a part of this for a long time and my, my life has changed. Um, my priorities have changed. And no matter what has happened in my life, Best Buddies has been able to be there to kind of meet me where I need to be. And I think that that's an amazing thing. What are some changes you would like to see in our country in regards to inclusion? Where to start? <laughs> um, I think that we have done a lot over the last 10 years or so to really um, uh, ensure that people have a seat at the table, regardless of their their skin color, their you know gender identity, their sexual preference, their intellectual abilities. Um, but I think that there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. And I think that that needs to happen uh, with more diversity at every level of our country structure, um, whether that's from our community leaders to our local businesses and even into the political sphere. Um, and it's not just on the base level. I think a lot of times you have a lot of people who start advocating, um, but it's, you know, it's, it's advocating from the top down. And I would love to see a lot of advocacy from the bottom up. And I think that that is what's really going to help us transform this world into a, a more inclusive place. Um, I also think that the conversations surrounding diversity, equity, and inclusion um, should be paramount when it comes to the fabric of our nation and our companies. And that conversation should expand beyond just simply racial and gender diversity, but also should include race, uh, to, uh, intellectual diversity as well. I think that there are a lot of people in this world who have incredible things to offer, who have been overlooked simply because of a diagnosis. And I think that we need two things. I think we need one, for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities to continue to speak up for themselves when they know that they can add value to a club, a workplace, or a community. And two, for our peers and colleagues and neighbors to actually listen to that. I think that you can't have actual inclusion. It's only an idea unless we take actionable steps to enact it. And I think that that part right there, it needs to be a give and it needs to be a take. Um, and that's really what's going to make us uh, take the next step forward. Because I think we've done a lot of really great stuff so far, but I think that there's a lot of things that we can do and we're almost there. It just needs uh, that, just that little push. And I think that when we listen to each other and we respect each other, that's how we're going to get there. Um, I'd like to know, how have you stayed connected with your colleagues in the Best Buddies community during COVID? I think it's just all of the, the typical means, you know, um, Zoom, Microsoft Teams for work stuff, um, FaceTime, um, you know, any sort of video chatting has been really key just because I think that seeing somebody's face is, you know, great. Um, but I also do think that an important part was managing the virtual overload. Um, I think sometimes we have found ourselves in a place where we were met with, you know, restrictions on social interaction in a physical sense. And so we had to put that somewhere. So we went to virtual. And I do think that, you know, if, if we're not careful, we can definitely kind of almost, almost resent it almost and kind of not look forward to it, kind of push it off because, oh, I've, I've been on Zoom too many times today. School has been absolutely insane. I have had back-to-back -back work meetings all day. So after work hours, uh, I want to be on a screen as little as humanly possible. But I know that that's the way that I can actually connect with some of my friends and family and my, and the Best Buddies community. So the... I think the, the thing that has been really vital over this uh, during this time, uh, during this pandemic has been uh, just re being really intentional about my communications and, and all that, setting up one-on-one -on -one things, uh, making sure that I'm doing an internal check as to how I'm feeling, um, making sure to really just kind of check in from time to time and say, hey, how are you feeling too? Um, I think that, you know, asking the questions, not only just looking inward, which is easy to do when you're you know, a little bit more isolated than you normally would be. Um, but with that said, I think that, you know, I ha we have done some safe, socially distanced and masked up hangouts in small groups and outdoor spaces. Uh, and I think that that can, that I think that's totally fine. Um, I think as long as you are being safe and smart about things, um, I think that that is definitely an option to do. And that's kind of helped curb some of that virtual fatigue, even if it's every couple months or whatever your comfort level is. Um, for me, it's been, you know, uh, I think maybe once every two or three months or so, it's been seeing somebody in person. And that has definitely helped kind of push me through while understanding that, you know, the steps that I can take in order to keep our community safe uh, and healthy um, are also very paramount as well. But virtually, I think that that's huge. Um, doing small activities, 
uh, recently have looked into doing different trivia things and things just to kind of interact with people in a way that's not just hopping on a Zoom call and seeing what happens, you know, being a little bit more intentional about the things that you're actually doing and asking for people. So my last question for you, Trevor, is what are some of your goals for Best Buddies in your state for the future? Oh, where to start? Um, I think that there are so many untapped areas of Best Buddies in Arizona, and we've accomplished a lot. So we launched our Citizens Program in 2018, uh, and that's been absolutely amazing. I think we have over just over 20 matches, and I just had a conversation with one of our program managers earlier today, and we're going to be making more matches in the coming weeks. So that's amazing. Uh, we just launched the Jobs Program in 2020 in the middle of a pandemic, which seems a little bit nuts, but it's been really well received. And we have a lot of uh, jobs participants that are eager to find work and really make a difference in, uh, in our communities and our workplaces. And just continue to fortify our school chapters and our ambassadors program. Uh, without strong programs, we don't have volunteers. And without volunteers, we don't have an organization. So uh, the successes at the most basic level of Best Buddies will equate to successes on every single level of Best Buddies. And it's important to not lose sight of that, uh, especially right now when stress and anxiety, anxiety are at an all-time high. And so I think I'll just kind of close out this little portion with, if you're watching this right now, it doesn't matter if you're in Arizona or Florida or New, or New York or in a different country, just make a point to do something this week to go above and beyond to, uh, for, for the friends that you've made through Best Buddies, whether that's a text, whether that's a little activity. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's big or small. And in fact, I think sometimes the smaller things are the things that equate to the biggest things. And um, when we feel important, uh, like when, when, or when you connect with somebody, you feel important. And when we feel important, we wanna do more. And so taking those small steps to do something now even if it's something that you think is inconsequential, I promise you, I promise you that it is absolutely going to have just an amazing ripple effect and create amazing things in our communities. So in the state of Arizona, um, I have the same vision as I do for the entire country and for all of Best Buddies. And that's just to continue to push forward and really just emphasize that people are important and that everybody should have a, have a seat at the table and that everybody's voice should be heard and that's it. No stipulations. I think that we should all do a, uh, make a concerted effort to ensure that every single person that we interact with is treated with respect and dignity and love. And if we do that, not only are we going to have a great organization, uh, but we're going to be happy in our lives and we're going to just continue to transform the world one step at a time. It'll take a while to get there, but I think that uh, we're going to get there and it's going to be through the people that are a part of this organization. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing all of this with us. This has been the 11th episode of YLC Chats and make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.